Okay guys, it's Swiss Moist the Lani Python Dinada Sana. So you're welcome to this session. In this session, we're going to cover how you can upload and download the files in Django and React.js. Actually, we're using Django version 4 and React.js version 18. In the background, we have API running, which is Django REST framework, and on the front end we have React.js. So if we, this is the first time for you to watch videos on my channel, please don't forget it to subscribe so as you can be timely updated when we upload a new masterpiece videos. So let's go to the demo. I click choose to browse the file, then select. When I submit, you can see file uploaded is successful. And here, Python book is added. When I click download, you can see I'm able to download the Python book. Okay. Then when I open it here on desktop, you can see this is just a Python book. So this is actual what you should expect. This is actual a bigger picture. You need to keep it in your subconscious. And you're going to make this at the end of this course. Okay. So don't forget to like, put comment, share, and subscribe to get updated when we upload a new video. Uno, dos, tres, let's go. So here we start with part number one, which is building the backend by using Django REST framework, right? So check out below the video description, you will find out a link which will redirect you to my github repo where you need to actual download the source code which will help you right so once you have downloaded the source code i mean the whole content the whole branch on my github repo you will find out a folder with a name resources so resources consist of CSS, it consists of React.js hyphen Django. There is requirements and upload, right? So, one by one, I'll actual guide on how you can use the provided resources, right? So, I choose to store my Django project folder. I open up a folder. With the name programs then after python so this is actually the path where i'm going to create our django project right so what you actually need to do is to open cmd i prefer to install packages within visual environment and that's how you can easily manage package you can easily manage packages associated with a certain project right so here what i'm actually going to do is to open up cmd then after change directory up to here right <clears throat> what you actually needed to do here is you are, you, you actually needed to create visual environment and install packages right for my case i have already created a visual environment with the name vm okay but for your case you'll need this command but before running this command make sure that you have already installed the visual environment in your computer so the command to create a python visual environment after installing of visual environment is python m vm then after comes the name of visual environment after that command, you will have already successfully created a visual environment with the name Motec. As you can see here, there is a project, uh, there is a folder added here. Okay, so that's how you can create a visual environment. It's pretty simple. Okay, because I have already created a visual environment, what I actually need to do here is to make sure I activate my visual environment. Then after install packages required for the project okay so the command to activate visual environment is we need to type the name of visual environment so vm 
scripts activate right so that's is the command is vm perfect so that is a command as i've told you that i'll actually guide you on how you can use the resources provided on my github account right so here what you actually need to do here is to copy this requirement and make sure you put it in the exact root of your vm the root directory of your vm okay so after that what you actually need to do here when you open up requirements you may find out it consists of necessary packages for you to carry out this project right so what you actually need to do is to install all these packages from this txt file and the command is very simple pip install our then after the name of our packages okay dot txt perfect after that you can see requirement already satisfied because i have already installed these packages in my visual environment but for your case it will actual need you to install these packages and uh, they'll be installed so far so nice you are getting there you know what are the requirement for us to carry out this project i prefer to use google chrome as my browser for web development and i prefer to use a vs code right so make sure you have installed the vs code make sure you have installed the google chrome make sure you have already installed the python because you cannot do anything uh, in django or flasky without the actual installing python okay so that's perfect so the next thing we are going to do here is we are going to create a django project with the name uh django react js and actually this is a simple command to create a project in django so the command is django admin right so start a project then after the name of project which is django underscore admin okay django admin start project django we need to say django react js this is perfect right okay when you press enter you can see there is a folder added in our root folder of python and this folder is django underscore react js so what we actually needed to do here is to change the directory to this that's perfect after creating django project what we actually need to do now is to create a django application and this is actually a command instead of start project the command is start up we need to start application then after the name of uh, our application which is core so this is core that's perfect we have successfully created a django project with the name core after that what we actually need to do here is to open this project on vs code okay so that's perfect so we are done with everything here so we can safely cross the cmd Let's cross command so after make sure you have installed the or you, you have created a django project and you have created a django application the next thing we are going to do here is to open up setting py file so as we can add some important settings right so what we can actually do is open up this file we can actually remove everything okay after that we needed to import os so import import os 
that's perfect uh, after that here we need to add third party application i mean all application we have created and we have installed we have created the core which is our custom django project i, I mean which is, is our custom django application we have course headers we have django rest framework so let's start it to add one after another okay to make it clear here we can actually add a comment that these are the third party application third party apps that's perfect so the third part apps the first app is core another application is uh, rest framework rest framework another application is course headers okay what actual course headers does is it allows third part application to consume the api it is uh actually called the uh resource origin sharing the sharing of resources okay so these are our third application in this project so after that the next thing we needed to do here is let us copy this line we needed to add the course headers on the section of middleware So it is very simple. So course headers dot middleware dot course middleware. That's perfect. So actually another configuration we actually needed to do here. I don't care about the database for the current time for the time being we are going to use sqlite which is the 40 database for django okay so what we are actually going to add here is media file i mean the path to store uploaded files the path the path to load and the path to save uploaded files So media root os dot path dot join base dialectal media so media URL that's perfect so before we proceed we needed to start this django project by using the django default web django default development server okay so before we run the django development server let's make migration so the command is python manage py making migrations after that we needed to migrate so that's perfect after migration let us run django development server run server that's perfect 
For added the advantage, you can actually install DB Browser SQL Variety, and this will actually help you to view the content of your SQLite database. Okay, so far so good. What we can actually uh, do here, you can see Django is running on port 80,000. So let us copy this and paste it on our Google Chrome browser. That's perfect. And you can actually see this is Django version 4.1. Perfect. So after doing so, the next thing we actually need we actually needed to do here is to create a model. Okay, a model is actually a data is actually a database structure or a table structure in our database. Okay, in a short and a clear explanation, we can say a model in Python is a table structure on the database. So let us create our Django model for storing uploaded files. So class files, the name of our table is files. Then the models dot model PDF. The name of our column will have only one column with the name PDF. Okay, so here is models. Okay, dot file field. Then upload it to. Can say store PDFs. That's perfect. We have one column for our table files. Okay, div. Okay, return dot PDF. So actually, this is a structure of our table. Let us run migration and uh, see how our table looks like on SQLite DB browser. Okay, so let us run migration. So we need to make migration. Okay, after that, we need it to actually migrate. That's perfect. As I've told you, for added advantage, it would require you to install DB Browser, SQLite DB Browser. Okay, that can really help you when it comes to database management of data stored on your SQLite 3. So here I've already opened the... Um, DB browser for SQL right here you can click open then after go to database after that browse to find the path of your SQL right database file okay so this is Django react JS then click open after that here you can see the list of all tables or models when you click here you can see we have ID and a PDF as I told you that the models in Django, it is actually representing the structure of your table on the database. As you can see, this is actually how our table looks like in DB SQLite 3 database. That's really perfect. So after creating a Django model, so it is a time to create Django view. Okay, so let us come up here. And here, as you can see, we have view. Okay, short views are the just Django function which return a response or returns data. So we can actually need it to create a view set.
Okay, so let's go. So we needed to import it, uh, you can say from dot models. We needed to import it files. Okay, from REST framework. We needed to import view sets. Right, then after, I think this is okay, but before we proceed to create a Django view, let us create one file with the name Serializer. Actually, what Serializer does in Django is actually to convert Django model color set into JSON format that, that can be understood by other 30-party uh, application, which are mainly JavaScript or API endpoint and endpoint API consuming our data in Django. So let us create a file with the name serializers. Okay, after that, um, from REST framework import serializer. That's perfect. As I've told you, the function of serializers in Django is actually to convert Django model color set into JSON format. Okay, so from dot models, we needed to import the model files which we want is data to be serialized. After that, let us create a serializer here. So we can say files serializer. Okay, files serial. So we can say serializers dot model serializer that's perfect okay we can specify which columns we want uh, our serializer to serialize The model is files. Fields. So ID PDF. So we actually want to serialize two columns, which is ID and a PDF. And uh, as you can see how our table looks like on DB browser for SQLite, you can see we have two columns. Actual, this is, ID is actually a default column in Django model. So we have two columns, uh, which is ID and a PDF. And we actually want to serialize the two columns on model files. So after that, we can get back here mm, on our views and create a view, okay? So what we actually needed to do here, first of all, let us import files as serializer. So we can say from dot serializer, we want to import files serializer. Perfect. After that, um, let us create a view, which is cross. Files view set.
view set dot model view set that's perfect so query set is equal to uh, files dot objects dot all Okay, so realize a uh, cross is file so realize this one so that's perfect so we have already created the view which will actually with the help of serializer to return our model call set into json format after that let us create a urls file so click here then it should be urls py okay go to your main urls file can actual remove everything from here perfect let us copy the content and paste them here okay so that's okay uh, what we actually needed to do here is let's say from rest framework dot routers import default router then if from dot view import files view set that's perfect then after let's say router is equal to default router Then after let us register our router, we can say router, uh, router, dot register, perfect, here we can say files, files, then here it is files, view set base name is files <clears throat> so that's perfect we have actually registered of one view set in our default router of rest framework so after that let us change it here you can say API then include router dot urls include okay so here we have path need to import include Okay, that's perfect. Then after, open up. Okay, the main URLs file. And after, let us add something here. So here we can say include include call dot urls. This is perfect. Okay, here we need it to import include. That's perfect. Okay, after that, we 
you can say from Django dot conf import setting port settings then from Django dot conf dot urls dot static import static okay after that from django dot conf dot urls that's perfect after that um, we can do something like this static then after settings dot media underscore url document root is equal to setting dot media root from django dot confi dot urls what's wrong Okay, settings has no decode. Okay, something is not okay here. Okay, from Django dot urls Okay. Okay, forget about this. It's running okay. So let us get here on the browser. Let us refresh. Okay. API. You can see we have successfully created the API for model files. Okay. That's perfect. Okay. Show something is wrong from django.confi 40 settings this is okay i don't know what is happening from django.confi let me try something here. Conf import settings. Anyways, as long as it is running correctly, thinky, it's no problem. And we are good to go. Okay. Okay, so here, as you can see on our API, we can browse a file. 
that we can post as you can see we have successful created or uploaded one file okay and the one I put here ID one you can see the I can there is getty there is a delete method you can actually install postman if you are good or have interest to use it for testing your API okay here I can test my API on postman okay so method you can say get you can see you can get the file okay but also not only that i can actually post the file i can say pdf headers okay content type should be mat part slash form data and here on your body you can say uh, this is a file okay so here you can select a file perfect then after you can post it no file was submitted i think there is something wrong okay Okay, this is our file. Just try once again. No file was submitted, so let us try out to use this form. You can say PDF. Okay, I think this is good. select your file okay the method is posty no file was submitted okay seems something wrong here Okay, this should not be file, it should be PDF. So when you click submit, you can see we are able to upload the file by using post method on our API using postman. So that is so actually this sum up the first part which is on the back end. Okay. After this, we are going to deal with the front end. We are done with API. Now let's go to check out how we can consume API. Right? So don't slow down. Get coffee, drink some water, get a break, refresh, then you will get back to proceed with the remaining part. So, guys, let's do our second part, which is front end. Right? So as I've told you that I have provided the resources folder um, and inside of this folder there is this folder with name react.js hyphen django okay after cloning this folder into your computer what you need to do is to run a command npm install so as it can install all packages present in json packages package json okay after running the command npm install it will install the following packages okay and when installation is successful your project your your your, your, your folder will be uh, actually updated with the folder named node hyphen module okay so that's it so after npm install it is npm start so as you can start your 
React application. And uh, when successful, uh, you should have this page as your default for upload. Okay. We actually needed to finish something in the backend. We needed to add it. Okay, we needed to add it to allow cross origin sharing of resources. Okay, so you can say cross origin allow all true. Okay, this will allow our, um, actually this will allow our React.js application to consume Django REST API. I hope that's clear. Uh, what's happening? Cross region is equal to true. True is not defined. Okay. Mm, true is not defined. Now this is defined. That's perfect. Did you mean it true? Yes. No objection so that's okay so let's come on our front end part so actually in the front end part you will have in your index here there is router and we have two routes for our application there is root and a slash app okay this is what is actual rendered on root of our react.js application okay and when we put it slash app you can see this is app component what is actual rendered here is component application present here okay here we can update something like this see something is changing so that's it if that's okay for you, let us proceed. I actually provided another resource file which is upload HTML. So open it with your coding editor. Then after, before you paste it there, let's do something, repress here, okay. In React.js, we have class name. We don't have class. So we press all. That's perfect. Just copy. Then after, let us remove everything and paste our stuff. Okay, there is error. No error. So when we come here, can see save file is not defined. Thank you. Um, okay, can just remove this, which was forgotten actual. So that's cool. You can see this is how it looks like. So this is actual a template I've provided with you. So. Another resource I provide I, I, I have provided is bootstrap offline resource. So here copy this file folder then after okay too many files. Okay, so come here, JavaScript web react Django and after here and let us create a new folder resource with name with name resource and after we need to paste this folder so actually this is bootstrap and there is a short and a very clear way to link this 
we can link it anywhere we can link it here okay so we can say import slash resource okay slash css slash bootstrap let us copy the name of this css file then after let us paste it here dot css what a magic i think you are web oh, it's amazing so everything has changed okay that's cool so after ring after linking our react.js uh, with uh, bootstrap so the next thing we are going to do here is actual to be able to upload a file okay to upload a file and uh, what do we actually need here is you can see here there is a status don't worry about this so let us create a react.js function for uploading a file so here okay we can create a function save file perfect then here let's say console.log button click the button click the so let us copy this okay so here let's say on click on click Okay, that's clear. Right click, then inspect. Come here on the console. Okay, let us refresh. And quote promise, bra bra, HTML4. So let us make some changes here. This should be hmm, HTML4. HTML4 that's clear. Now I refresh here. It's okay. Perfect. When you click submit, you can see button click the there is a message here. So after that, let us what we need actually to be able is to capture the file browse the by a user then after submit it in the backend okay so here we'll actually use from data okay before from data here let us use um use state hooks const let's say file set files it's actually not something like this we actually need the file name file name which will be uh, a variable to capture the file name blows the by user and after here we can say set file name this is perfect use state that's perfect right use a state central that's cool as i've told you that we're going to use a form data okay uh, so form data to actual submit to capture the the, the file browsed by a user 
can say form data is equal to new form data so here we can say form data dot append bracket pdf file name okay actual when we use form data is actual it's like we submit we do the normal html form submission so after that let us uh, config axio setting so we can say let axios config okay headers here there is content type multi part slash form data because we are actual submitting a file okay so we need the header mat part form data so after that we can actual um so this is start from here okay after that can console log from data okay So let us try something here. Let us try. Let's refresh or react up. So blows file. Okay. So what happened when we click submit and cut before initialization from data? Okay. Here there is uh, from data. Okay. and court referency cannot access from data before initialization on line 12 so this is new from data Okay, let's try one more. Okay, okay. Okay, I decided to restart our React application. And see Axios config okay so let us refresh Submit. What's happening? Okay, no worry. Let us proceed. Okay.
let us comment this so axios dot posty the method is posty bracket dot then okay before we proceed let us define here api Okay, let us define the URL of our API. Copy this. And paste it here. So here we put uh, API plus files. After that, we path from data. and the uh, axios configuration which include headers so here dot then okay we know that this will actually return a promise so we can say response console log dot response okay dot catch error console log console log okay it's perfect let's try something here okay let's do something here okay there is an error still so let us come here on our form okay so here we need the uh, on change method which will be actual updating the file name blows the by a user okay so here we can say on change on change set file name e dot target dot files zero So let's try something here. Let's browse a file. What happens when you click submit? From data. Okay. Oh. This should be something. <laughs> oh. Okay, so now we can uncomment this. Okay. 
So let us refresh. Let's browse your file. When I click submit, you can see here. Oh, have we successful? You can see here. We have actually submitted this file in the backend. Okay. Let us see number of files. So here we have one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, let us try once again. I think we are done with uploading a file. Okay. Right. Hmm. Here we have three files. When we refresh, okay. Oh, I can't believe uploading a file is very simple, and we are done. So let us. What we actually needed to do here is to get select all uploaded files and show them on table. Okay. Then after we'll do the final part, which is downloading a file. So here we're going to create another function which is const get files. This is arrow function. Okay. So it is going to be uh, can copy everything from here. Copy everything from here and paste it here. So what we actually need here, this is should be get method. Okay, we don't submit an information because we are fetching information from the backend. Right. After that, let us create um, another hook. Say this is files. This should be set files. Perfect. After that, hmm, what we actually need to do here, console log, we actually need to put this method in use effect hooks. Okay, and the use effect hook will be executed when the page is being rendered. It's actually like a uh, created or mounted uh, hook in Vue.js. So, so use effect. Okay, copy this, paste it here. Okay, let's try something here. Console.log. I want to see the files. It has come here. It has refresh. Okay, can see data. Okay, these are the files we have. Okay. So this should be response dot data. Okay. 
perfect -y. let's see okay I like you know I, I I think you can see we have the files URLs of our files and the ID so what we actually need here to do is let us copy this then set files Okay, let us comment this. Add something like this. Okay, that's okay. So, if we try out to console.log file, you will see the variable files consist of, of you can see, let us refresh. Okay, no worry. Okay, next one. Mm, so That's perfect. So the next thing we want to do here is to use um, map function to display uh, to display uh, fetch the names of files on our table. Okay. So what we can actually do here supposed to be here. Can do something like this okay you can say files dot map Okay, file dot map. Okay, this should be okay. I think. Uh, here we can say a uh, file dirty PDF okay let's see what's happening you can see the files name are here so what we actually needed to do here is to copy this actual Copy everything from here. Okay. Then you paste it in. Cut this. This should be okay. That's perfect.
you can see we have list of files uploaded so that's okay so the next thing is to activate this button so when user click download the user should be able to download a pdf file okay So here we have button, let's say on a click. Download it with Axios path in file dot pdf file dot id and let us create this function All right so you can say uh, this is our function Okay, so we want to create a function which will enable user to download a file when a button download is clicked. So this function will be taking URL. Okay, let's enter the title of a file. Then after Axios. The method is get there is URL, there is response type, which is array buffer. Okay, dot then Okay. So we can say force downloads. This is actually another function we are going to create. Response text title. Okay, after that, dot catch. Error. console.log error okay so let us create this another function const this is actual arrow function okay So inside of this function, say it also take response. And the title. So here let's try to say console log response. Okay, let's end here.
Okay, refresh this. Okay, and cut promise. Okay, never mind. What happened when I click download? You can see the response here. Buffer. Okay, when you click here on data. Okay, when you click here on header, you can see there is a file, there is a PDF. And the last modified date is Sunday. Okay, first of January 2023. Okay. So let us proceed here. Seems our response returns something. Say so let's say const URL. Okay. Swindow.url dot uh, create object url new blob response dot data Post link is equal to document dot create element okay you are L not a link dot set attribute here is download and uh, the name is the name of file is a title plus dot pdf so we wanted the file to be downloaded to be downloaded with the file id okay what i mean is that if you open up here you can see this is id 1 id 2 id 3 id 4 so the file will be saved with id dot pdf okay so here document dot body And child link link dot click. Okay, let's try and see if we can actually download. Okay, so let us refresh. So when I click here, perfect, as I told you that the file will be saved with ID. You can see this is 4 because it has ID of 4. This must be 1.pdf because it has ID of 1. So when we open up, that's cool. We are almost done. So let us wind up something here. Okay. So let us copy this, use the set hook, paste it here, okay, can say set, can say status, okay, let us copy this. So when a file has been saved successful here, can set a status and say file uploaded successful that's perfect and what we actually want to do here is to check if there is status so this is how we can do we can say something like this if there is a status 
then you want to display the status if none then null okay it's amazing so let us let me delete some files I don't want too many files okay save refresh <laughs> it's amazing so let us browse a file okay Python book when you click submit you can see file upload is uploaded is successful so this is actually the end of today's session on how you can upload it and uh, download the files by using Django 4 and the React JS 18 I think this is one of your enjoyable session don't forget to like put comment share and subscribe Asante sana. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Muito obrigado. Kamza Amida Aita. Thank you. I hope to see you in my coming tutorials. Messi buku, messi buku. Obrigado.